Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, June 1st, around 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2024. A busy day on the sun, two X-flares, three X-flares in just over 24 hours, including a long-duration M-flare. The most recent couple, the X 1.0 and M 7.3, an Earth-directed CME has been confirmed due to the halo nature here on telemetry. That means a geomagnetic storm is coming. Will there be more X-flares? Stay tuned for more. Keep calm. It's boom time. Parts of Oklahoma could see ping-pong ball-sized hail 70 mile per hour winds later as the severe weather threat continues for the central U.S. and the south, here is the hail map for yesterday, Friday, May 31st. 95, 67 households with hail larger than an inch. 2,388 households impacted by one gorilla hail. Yeah, six square miles of gorilla hail yesterday. The big winner, Odessa, Texas. Here's the forecast. An active pattern for the center of the nation. Increasing rainfall threat for the Pacific Northwest. An active pattern remains in place across the center of the country with additional threats from severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall. These concerns will remain in place through most of the weekend. An approaching storm across the Pacific Northwest is expected to bring heavy rainfall and strong winds late into the weekend, maybe even some snow to those higher elevations. The heat risk and fire weather concerns will increase across the Southwest. We, in fact, for a few hours here, our valley was filled with smoke today. Maybe it was someone burning locally. We hope so, because that has since changed. Let's take a quick look over at the GFS model, and we can see there's a little severe weather threat right now in New Orleans, but it's going to explode over northern Louisiana in the next three hours and maintain some threats through midnight for the south central and southeast. By Monday, take a look. Monday, fun day, will be Sunday night into Monday. Could be some heavy weather up in the north central plains exploding over Iowa Monday morning as well as Nebraska. Kiss my... <laughs> but that is our main focus as this continues to be a stain on the GFS model. Something big is coming for Iowa Monday which could be their fun day. Quick look at the total snowfall to see if any of that moisture in the Pacific Northwest will fall as snow. Ho, ho, ho. And indeed it will in Washington State. Indeed, picking up some significant totals up in the Olympics. Did you know it's June 1st? Yes, it is. First day of June. A June boom. The beginning of meteorological summer. And it's certainly not a bummer. It's hot out. It was sweltering today. I could feel the sun burning my flesh. And also, it's a historical day. June 1st, 1638, quite a few years ago, the first earthquake ever recorded in the USA hit Plymouth, Massachusetts. Now, there have been earthquakes before, but we weren't here, the settlers, yet. And in fact, on June 1st, the first earthquake reported in the United States hit Plymouth, Massachusetts, according to the USGS. People ran. They were so fearful, they ran for miles. Interesting story. Quick look, seismic update. A moderate uptick in earthquakes today worldwide in the low levels, but some unique quakes happening in the U.S. 3.1 in Montana, an interesting quake 2.6 up in I, Ohio? I was going to say Iowa because I just said it. But we do have some rumblers over in China. 5.6 in Xinjiang. I'd love to say that. We have a 5.2 in Japan. Tsungo, Japan. And, well, just normal activity, albeit slightly elevated. As we take a look at worldwide volcano news for the day, Reykjanes volcano eruption is remaining stable. Let's take a quick look over at it live. And it looks fantastic. The visibility has been poor for days. That has cleared out. And, well, the video over here at the eruption is spectacular. Look at the size of these spatter cones that are building. Ramparts. Probably 100 feet high there, I would imagine. And we did show you some amazing video, I believe, last night of this wall collapsing. So, the eruption continues over at Iceland at pretty consistent levels. In fact, it's stable. 
and a new updated hazard map has been laid out with the main zone, zone three, the most dangerous area, sinkholes, fault movement, lava flows, tephra, and gas pollution right along that fissure zone. Sun gay to 19,000 feet today, Raventa door to 15, Sabancay to 24,000, Fuego puffing the passing, Liwa Tobi to 8,000 foot today, Semaru, who knew? Now you do, 15,000 foot puff, Popo to 19, Nevado de Ruiz, 20,000 foot puff, Sabancay to 24, Sun gay to 22,000, Ducono to 10, Raventa door to 15, this is a big list, Liwa Tolo volcano in the Sunda Straits. Indonesia lava flow eruption on the western slope continuing and visible from Sentinel-2. Take a look at that. Take a look at this explosion to 21,000 feet this morning from Ibu, also in Indonesia. So Indonesia is heating up. Reykjanes Peninsula, the hazard assessment. We just showed you the map. And Ibeko is the last report of the day at 10,000 feet. Space weather update for the 1st of June and the beginning of summer. Not a bummer. Three X flares kicking off the sun. This is the 50th X flare of Solar Cycle 25, matching the same amount of X flares of Solar Cycle 24. The only difference is that these 50 X flares we've had in Solar Cycle 25 are all substantially weaker than the X flares in cycle 24, which was a weaker cycle. We'll show you those in just a moment. Here's a look at the GOES X-ray flux and the X, 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 and M flare. This one is going to produce uh, a geomagnetic storm, definitely, which should arrive in about 48 hours. The, the uh, plasma modeling has not come up yet, so we can't see the severity until morning. Here is more telemetry here, the Discover Solar Wind. Showing us the passage of that CME early this morning here that we were waiting for. I was thinking last night on the show it could have been this little change in the phi, but it is definitely right here, folks. And it didn't do anything to the KP index whatsoever. Here is the Solar Cycle 24 top 50 solar flares. Now, the strongest solar flare for Solar Cycle 25 was, I believe, 8.7. Just happened during the superstorm of May. And you can see here that there were at least three X flares stronger than the strongest X flare so far this cycle, last cycle. An X 9.96, an X 11.88, and an X 13.37. So, solar cycle 25 is a little stronger than 24. What can we expect moving through solar max? Maybe we can get an X flare stronger than 13.37. If it's earth facing, that would be amazing because it would produce a geomagnetic storm stronger than we've ever seen since the Carrington event. Probably wouldn't fry the grid at that level, however, but it appears as if the sun is going a little weak and the X flares are reducing, and I think we may be dropping into solar minimum a little early, but we won't know until we wait it out maybe six more months and get more data. Did you know that each second... 1.5 million tons of solar material shoot off the sun in the forms of plasma, traveling at hundreds of miles per second. They slam into our magnetosphere. This is known as the solar wind, a stream of plasma that has pelted Earth for about 4 billion years, as far as we can tell. And if it wasn't for the magnetosphere, well, we wouldn't be here. Check out this article, Quantum Time Travel. An experiment is coming up. The experiment is to send a particle into the past. And this has to do with quantum entanglement and quantum time loops. Quantum time loops have long been the stuff of science fiction. But now, using the rules of quantum mechanics, we have a way to effectively transport a particle back in time. Can you believe this? Ashton Forbes may be on to something. When Seth Lloyd first published his idea about quantum time loops, he hadn't considered all the consequences. For one thing, he hadn't anticipated the countless emails he would get from would-be time travelers asking for his help. If he could have his time over again, he jokes, he probably wouldn't have done it. But we're not talking about sending people back in time. Theoretical routes to the past called time loops have long been hypothesized by physicists. 
but because they are plagued by impracticalities and paradoxes, they have been dismissed as impossible for just as long. But now Lloyd and other physicists have begun to show that the quantum realm, these loops to the past, are not only possible, but even experimentally feasible. In other words, we will soon effectively try to send a particle back in time. If that succeeds, it raises the possibility of being able to dispatch, if not people, then at least messages in the form of quantum single signals back in time. So we can send messages back in time. The only problem is that dumb people will have no way of knowing we've done it. So I don't know how that helps. <laughs> We're talking Hunga Tonga. Haipei, the most explosive eruption we've seen in the modern times. The giant Tonga eruption could disrupt weather for years. And this is what we said years ago when it happened. But more papers corroborating that fact. It created a tsunami uh, across the Pacific Basin and sent sound waves around the globe multiple times. A new study published in the Journal of Climate explores the climate impacts of this eruption. The findings show the volcano can explain last year's extraordinarily large ozone hole as well as the much wetter weather than expected summer of 2024. And more of it is coming. Wait a minute. How do they know it's a much wetter summer of 2024? That just started right now. Apparently, they're already experimenting with this time loop. Who's not experimenting with a time loop? It's Boeing. They can't even make an airplane safe, let alone get humans in space. The Boeing Starliner crewed mission once again scrubbed after this is approaching eight years of not a single human in space, which is good news because once they push that launch button, people will explode. I hope not. Cool paper coming out, a local bright spot among melting glaciers. A 2,000-kilometer strip of Antarctic ice-covered coastline has been stable for 85 years. Yeah. You know all the fear-mongering on the West Antarctic ice shelf? Yeah. Well, that could be all nonsense and fear porn because... A whaler's forgotten aerial photographs from 1937 have given researchers at the University of Copenhagen the most detailed pictures of ice evolution in East Antarctica to date. The results show that ice has remained stable in East Antarctica and even grown slightly over the last century. How do you like them apples? Not a peep from the mainstream. Lee and I are going to dissect four amazing topics in just a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News. Please join us. Excuse me there. In just a few minutes, unexpected global warming spike explained sto solar storm effects and their effect on the rotation of Earth. Very fascinating. Huge plasma storms like the solar storm of 2003 and the most recent one of May of this year have actually slowed the Earth. We're also going to be talking about an ancient occupation site in Maryland that dates back earlier than 22,000 years ago, it completely blowing away the Clovis first idea that needs to go to rest. For once and for all, we've got footprints in white sands dating to 23,000 years ago and a bunch of people in Maryland making amazing tools. Get over there and watch the show. It is fascinating, and that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. Not only are our subscribers at zero, but the video is only shown to people who subscribed. How do you think that works? It's called the shadow ban. They don't want you to get this information, so we need you to share this on your social media. Be a hero. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. We'll see you in a minute over at Magnetic Reversal News. And that's a boom, too.